at your highest moment, be careful because that's when the devil comes. That's what Denzel Washington told Will Smith after he slapped Chris Rock at the 2022 Oscars. At your highest moment, be careful because that's when the devil comes. That's true. However, when he said it, I thought to myself, well, hell, those words could be uh, applicable to Chris Rock. Those words could be said to Chris Rock. And then I thought, well, who is the devil? Is the devil Chris Rock? Is the devil Will? Is the devil Jada? Is the devil some being or energy outside of us? Who is the devil? Who, who, is, who is this devil he's talking about? And it made me think about a story of my own. And so, uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do, man. Story time. Let's get into a toasters. Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. It's September 24th, 2001. I'm in an interview with a manufacturing company, a huge manufacturing company across the U.S., and they're interviewing me for an IT network admin position. Now, at this point, I'm 24 years old. I've only been in IT, uh, I would say, two years. Yes, two years. So this is going to be my second job in IT. My first job, I uh, worked for a small mom and pop shop. I'm talking about really small. We only had maybe 10, 10 employees. And I think they had a contract uh, with someone in Taiwan. But it was really small. Uh, everybody was a contractor except the front office. But the guys uh, in IT in the field out there doing fix and breaks on computers and laptops and servers, things like that, software upgrades, we were all contract. And so... Uh, it was my first gig in IT. Uh, so, you know, I was fortunate just to even get that opportunity. I had no experience, so I was really fortunate. But after a while, I started gaining the experience, of course, and I needed benefits. I needed medical benefits uh, that that would really uh, be beneficial or lenient on my paycheck. And so uh, I said, well, it's time to grow. And I applied for uh, an opportunity that I saw on monster.com. I was brought in for the interview September 24th, 2001. I'll never forget that date. The reason I won't forget that date, even though it was so many years ago, is because this was two weeks after 9-11. Yeah, this was two weeks after 9-11. And in the interview... Uh, we talked a little bit about the duties and my skill set, and, and he asked me a few questions about IT. But most of that interview, we talked about 9-11. That's how fresh it was. It was two weeks uh, old, that, that event. And so that's what we talked about, the majority of the interview. And, you know, we were both in shock. I was interviewing with this guy, Robert. Can't remember his last name, HR manager. And I'm telling you, man, I never had an interview like that, of course, because I've never experienced a, you know, a catastrophic event like that. And he hadn't either, I'm sure, even though he was much older than me. But that's that's what we talked about the entire interview. Um, I got the job. You know, he sent me my way. Got me. I got a call maybe two days later. Said I had the job. So I resigned from the first IT job I ever had. And... Uh, and I took this job and, you know, I left on, on a good note. You know, those guys, uh, I still communicate with those guys. And um, I won't say we're friends, but I still communicate with the guys from the first IT job. Uh, they gave me an opportunity and I was appreciative. Now, let me give you a bit of history. Uh, with this first IT job, I was the lone black guy. And that's been the story of my career in IT. Uh, is either I'm the lone black guy or there's another black guy, or I'm in this department 
that's the only black guy. But there's another guy in IT who's black. He's the only black guy in that department. And then there's another guy over in this department within IT, and he's the only black guy in that department. So that's just that's just the way it is. Uh, we're truly a minority, you know, in, in that world. I think it's getting better. I think it's growing. But, uh, you know, I'm talking about, you know, years ago. I was 24 years old. Well, at the time, the, f the first job, I was 22. And so just to give you some, some lead up, some build up until what's going on. Uh, and so that's just the way it was, you know, uh, the minority, you know, minority in America and a lot of situations, you know, the minority in, in IT. That's just how it is. So I get hired with the second job I ever had in IT. I get hired and Tosas, I'm making more money than my mom is about to retire at. Uh, and I say this for a reason, uh, not to brag or boast, but it's the reason I'm saying this and I'll get back to it. This is 2001. I'm 24. My mom is going to retire from her job after 30 years on one job. The next year, I'm making more money than her at 24 and she's retiring after 30 years from uh, Southwestern Bell. So I'm pretty fortunate, right? I'm pretty blessed. No college degree. Uh, only thing I have under my belt is a high school diploma, uh, military uh, reserves, and uh, a trading school, uh, computer learning center out of Garland, Texas. And I didn't even finish that because the school went bankrupt. They closed the school down. Uh, corporate office was in Chicago. They went bankrupt, closed the school down. So we didn't even get, you know, diplomas or anything weird thing uh the positive side to that i didn't owe any money so i had a student loan on that but since the school went bankrupt they didn't uphold their end of the bargain i have no student loan so i've never owed the guard the, the, the government because they filed bankruptcy so but i learned a lot i learned enough and so <laughs> it just worked out man so i did have that under my belt now this company i joined in Lancaster, Texas, huge manufacturing company. Um, I won't say the name, but if you know, you know. Uh, it, it make nuts and bolts and um, fitters and, and fittings and different things like that with the plumbing uh, industry, uh, bath industry, those types of things. Uh, they control a lot of the market in Lowe's and Home Depot. Huge company. Uh, the corporate office is in Michigan, but I'm working at the Lancaster, Texas office. It's a suburb, I would say, in DFW in Dallas. I am, in the 80 years this company has been there, I am the first black man to work in a front office. That's not bragging. It's nothing to be proud of, I guess. But I say that for a reason, and I'll get back to that. So... I'm the first black guy to work in the front office. So the way this building, this company is set up in this location, you have the front office, all right? And then you have the break room, all right? And then after the break room, you go through some doors, you have the manufacturing plant where they, you know, uh, do all the, 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 the tools, where they make the tools, the nuts and bolts and, and the fittings and things like that, hoses, a bunch of other stuff. I say that for a reason. So I'm going along. Now, this is a small IT department at that location. Now, they have other locations. And in their corporate office, they have a huge IT department because that's corporate. You know, that's corporate. So in Michigan, it's huge. But this location is small. They concentrate more on the nuts and bolts of their company, which is making tools. So in this plant, they have, man, maybe, maybe 200 employees, uh, three shifts. It never closes down. The plant never closes. <clears throat> the front office closes, of course, but the plant never closes. So in this IT department, there's me and there's this other guy who's old enough to be my father. And uh, 
you know, I could tell we from different sides of the track automatically. I could tell. But, you know, in the beginning, it's going okay. It's going okay, right? Now, he was the only IT guy in the, in that particular plant for years, for 20 years, I think. And here I come along. And I think they brought me along because the workload was building, of course. But also, uh, he was uh, experiencing a lot of medical uh, or health uh, complications. Uh, he had a, a degenerative disc in his neck. I had never heard of that before. And so he really couldn't move his neck a lot of times. Sometimes he was in major pain. And uh, as a result of that, I had to do a lot of the lifting when we was lifting servers or computers, things like that. I had to do a lot of that because he couldn't physically do it. So I say that for a reason too. Okay, moving along. So it's going good. I'm doing well financially. 24 years old, man. I'm making some good money. Uh, I'll just say this, man. Uh, if you... Uh, if you take in inflation today, today in 2022, I will be making around 120K. So, you know, you figure it out. I just don't really like throwing out numbers, but today it will be worth like 120K. So at 24, man, I'm making a lot of money. Uh, and, you know, I'm doing well. I know my stuff. I've done a lot of studying to catch up. Because I don't have a background in IT prior to that trade school. I didn't have a background. So I'm doing overload studying. I'm, I'm really putting in that work, man. Uh, got the candlelight burning. I'm putting in that work uh, just to, to get ahead. And I'm doing well. And just in two years, here I am, a network admin. And um, it's just, I'm like, man, I'm feeling good. You know, I got... I got access to the entire building, codes, keys, master keys, uh, security codes. Um, I got a company credit card. Uh, it's doing well. I'm doing well, man. Two weeks after I was hired, they sent me to Michigan to meet everybody and, you know, to train, get trained on their software, their proprietary software. So I'm doing quite well. I'm doing well, man. I'm feeling good. I'd never been out of town. Uh, on the company. So this is the first time I've been out of town on the company. Uh, you know, some corporate travel. Never experienced that. Never had a company pay for my hotel, my plane, my food, give me a stipend. Um, never had it. At 24, I'm feeling good, man. Uh, I'm not too far removed from the hood, from my neighborhood. I'm not too far removed from being in that situation. So I'm feeling really good. And if when you really think about it, man, this is 2001. I'm the first uh, brother to, to work in that front office, right? For the, whatever reason. I can't speculate. But when you think about it, just 50 years prior, man, you had Jim Crow. You had brothers getting hosed down. You, you know, uh, you had lynchings, hangings. Just had a lot going on you know you think you know police brutality is bad now back then it was a whole nother level and you, you probably didn't have a chance of getting justice just 50 years prior to 2001 i'll say that for a reason so i'm going along i'm going along i'm enjoying myself i'm having some sex uh i know my stuff i'm doing well they even got me on the newsletter the company newsletter when i joined top billing I was like, man, they rolled the carpet out for me. I'm doing well. Now, the guy who I'm in IT with, this older guy, he and I share an office. Now, to get into this office, there's a combination on the door. Now, when you go into this office, there's my desk, there's his desk, and then there's another room further behind attached to that office that you can't see from the hallway. You can't see it. If you look through the window of the door, you can't see the second room, but that's where we fix computers. 
um, you know, uh, connect cabling, fix servers, whatever the situation is, right? That's our work room. There's a few workbenches back there, but you can't see inside that room from the outside. And if you're in that room, you can hear someone trying to get in the front door because there's a combination on the door. I say all that for a reason, and I'll get to that. Now, this guy who I share an office with, uh, he doesn't really get along with, with a couple other guys, you know, the, the white collar guys in the front office, HR manager, uh, the director of operations. Uh, we got a comptroller in the front office. Uh, we got accounting in the front office and, and so, something else. He really doesn't vibe with them. They don't like him. He doesn't like them. So who he really vibes with are the blue collar guys in the plant. Man, it's a, it's a bunch of them. He really vibes with those guys. Uh, and that's that's his click, man. They click up every day in the morning, during lunch, after work. That's his crew. I don't know anyone. So in the beginning, I have lunch with these guys. You know, that, that's who I'm lunching with. I'm in a department with him. These are his guys. I don't know anyone. I have lunch with these guys. But after a while, I'm like, I really ain't digging these guys. You know, um, I just don't dig the culture, right? And I'll say this. These guys in these plant, um, there's three generations of, of uh, lineage that work, work in, these, in this plant. I mean, sometimes you got the mother, the father, the son, the daughter, the daughter-in-law, the brother-in-law, cousins, all have worked in this plant. 10, 15, 20, 50 years. And so it's a different type of mentality. And a lot of these guys went to school together. They were raised together. They played football and basketball together. They know each other's grandparents. It's a different vibe. And so I'm the first brother up front <laughs> ever. But you got a lot of brothers in the back, in the plant. You got a lot of sisters in the back. So I'm like, I stand out. Nobody has seen this. In all the years they've worked there, nobody has seen this, right? But after a while, I'm not feeling the vibe. So I stopped having lunch. I stopped sitting at the table with these guys. Remember, you got the front office, the lunch room, and then you go into the plant. So some guys from the plant at another table, uh, some Hispanic guys, they asked me, hey, man, you know anything? about 21, the card game 21. This is what they play on a lunch break. So I said, yeah. So I started playing card games with them, different card games, having lunch with them. These other guys, <laughs> they start having a problem with that. A lot of mumbling, a lot of whispering. But I just felt more comfortable with these other guys. And so that's what I did. Um, you know, that was my thing. So anyway, after a while, uh, me and the guy I shared an office with, we started bumping heads um, about different things I didn't like. Uh, he would say slick things. One thing he said was, see, I can deal with a guy like you. It's just those other ones I got a problem with. Yeah, I had a real problem with that. Um, for one, it's ignorant. For one, I don't like using the R word, but we can say the R word. But most, more so it's ignorant. And for three, you don't even really know me like that. You don't know what I'm capable of doing. You don't know what I've done. You don't know how far removed I am from doing some things. You don't know me. And so you're just talking, and you really don't even know me. I, sup I wake up surprised that they've given me codes and a master key to this company. Like, dang, uh, how do I slide through the cracks? Because I'm not too far removed from some stuff, right? So he doesn't even know me. And uh, he's making a, bra a generalization about me and a people. He just doesn't even know. And so, um, you know, I just started noticing things. So... We would be in the office, man, <laughs> for eight hours and not speak or only speak 
when it was work related. I mean, this is a small office. So he got to a point I wasn't feeling him, he wasn't feeling me. So after a while, his boys ain't feeling me. And, you know, they're not even nodding at me. I'm not nodding at them in passing. Um, you know, I wouldn't say it was tense, but, you know, it, it wasn't uh, it wasn't any uh, camaraderie, anything like that. You know, but uh, I'm sure they didn't feel threatened, and I didn't feel threatened. We just wasn't messing with one another. But this went on. This went on for a while, man, for about six months. So one day, we're upgrading our hardware. We're going to upgrade our hardware. We're going to move to another version of Dell desktops and laptops. And so I'm responsible for this. I'm responsible for upgrading uh, taking out the old hardware, installing the new hardware, installing the software, all that. I'm responsible. So I asked corporate, I asked Michigan, what do we want to do with this, this old hardware? What do you want to do with it? It's out of lease. I mean, we own it. What do you want to do with it? But the stuff still works. We're just upgrading. Corporate said, See if anybody in the company, front office, and the plant wants the computers. He said, don't sell them. Just give them away. I said, cool. So that's what I did. I put out the word um, by word of mouth. That, hey, we're giving away these computers. We're not selling them. Just giving them away. And, and man, they were flying. They were flying. People were like, yeah, I'll take them. I'll take them. I mean, everybody from the plant. And, uh, man, we're talking about, bro, we're talking about maybe 100 computers. And so what I did was, though, I documented everything. I documented the serial numbers of the old hardware, who I gave it to, what time, what day, and I had them sign, uh, sign their signature. And so uh, just to see why eight cover your ass right so it got around that these computers were be give, given away but this guy and his click start putting out the word unbeknownst to me start putting out the word that i was selling these computers yeah they start putting out the word that i was selling these computers and so the comptroller and he's dead now. He was a, our, an Armenian guy. Yeah, I never met an Armenian. He's an Armenian guy. Uh, same, guess, race as the Kardashians. I never met an Ar Armenian, but he was an Armenian guy. He was the comptroller. He called me into his office one time, and he goes, uh, hey, so what's going on with these computers? I said, oh, yeah, corporate said just to give them away. You know, He said, do you got... Got the email on that? I said, yeah, yeah, I'll be right back. I'm not thinking anything. So I said, I'll be right back. Printed out the email, came back. Uh, there it goes. He looked at it. He said, yeah, they gave you clearance to do it. He said, man, let me tell you something. These guys, he wouldn't say names. He said, these guys are saying you selling these computers. Man, they, they are really trying to get you out of here. <laughs> I said, man, I got documentation who I gave a computer to. I got the email saying to give them away. I'm not selling these computers. And so that was the case. He was like, man, I tell you what. Either you a smart guy or someone's covering you because you got your stuff together. I did. I had my documentation together. Um, and I was taught that from the first IT job. I always keep your documentation on point. And anytime I've had an interview in IT, they ask me, what's one of your strongest points? And I say, documentation and communication. Those are my two strongest points. Uh, the soft skills. Yeah, I can do the IT work, but not everybody got the soft skills. And I learned that, that documentation part from the first job I had in IT. So I'm pissed. So I leave his office. I'm pissed, man. I'm steaming. I'm 24 years old. I'm steaming. But 
it's like I've never experienced this stuff, man. Like with the first IT job, man, we were all like homeboys, man. Like it was a, it was a different vibe, you know what I'm saying? And this was out in the suburbs. This was out in Plano. The first IT job, if anybody know about Plano, this was out in Plano. So it's a different mentality, a different vibe. And we were all around the same age. Over here, it's a totally different vibe. Uh, it's, it's just a whole different vibe. And I explained that in the beginning. A totally different vibe. And these guys are old enough to be my dad. And, you know, it's just a different vibe. So I'm pissed, right? I'm pissed. I'm pissed. Uh, I'm steaming. And so... My thing is to attack, right? I'm 24. Um, that's where I come from. That's the neighborhood I come from. So attack is a situation like this, but you can't do that. This is corporate America. Um, although, you know, it, it has a, a huge <laughs> blue collar uh, presence. Um, and I, I'll just keep it respectful, you know. And I got no problem with my blue collar, blue, blue collar brothers. Uh, most of my homies are either entrepreneurs or blue collar. Uh, so I got no problem with that. But we'll just say blue collar. But there's another word I want to use. And uh, I'm pissed, man. And I know who did this. I know who's behind it. It's that crew. It's that crew. I know it's. I know they're behind it. And I want to address it. But I got to address it right. Uh, I can't have any witnesses. I can't be caught on camera. I got to address it right. But I got to let them know that I know, you know, what's up. So one day, lo and behold, I'm coming from the front office. Remember I told you? I'm coming from the front office. Now I got a job to do in the plant. So I exit the front office. I'm going through a door. Now I'm in the break room. Now, one of these dweebs that's in the crew, he's coming from the factory, the plant, and now he's in the break room, and we meet. And there's nobody in there but us. I was like, yes, this is beautiful. So I, he's trying to walk past me while I even make an eye contact. So I step in front of him. He tries to move again, I step in front of him. So now he makes eye contact. I tell him, hey man, I know what you and your punk ass boys did. I said, I'll whoop your ass. He said, you can't talk to me like that. I said, I just did. So he went around me into the front office. I proceed into the plant. About an hour later, I get my name called over the intercom. Please come to HR. So I go to HR, talk to Robert. You know, the guy who interviewed me, the guy who I spoke with about 9-11, the entire interview. And he said, it's been reported that you threatened someone. I said, I don't know what you're talking about, Robert. What do you mean? He said, you threatened someone. I said, Robert. I'm just here doing my work, minding my business. Man, these, these guys don't want me here. They don't want me here. You know, and, and this is just another example of them not wanting me here. He goes, Stacy, we can't control what people do to us. We can only control how we react. I said, yeah. I said, I, I, I get it. I, I don't know. I, I have no idea what, what they're talking about. He said, okay. And that was it. So life goes on. And um, I want to be more challenged. And I feel like, man, I'm doing a lot of the grunt work. A lot of the grunt work. And I understand this guy is in pain. Um, all day and he has this issue with his disc but I don't care I don't care about him that's my mentality he needs to carry his load so I spoke with the manager I said hey I'm tired of doing the grunt work or most of the grunt work 
Remember the word grunt. I'm tired of doing the grunt work. He needs to carry his head. And uh, so this became a big deal, right? So we had a meeting. My manager, the guy I shared an office with in HR, all had to sit down. So HR is there. My manager says, well, you brought it to our attention that you're tired of doing the slave work. I'm heated again right there in this meeting. I'm heated. I'm steaming. I'm steaming. I'm 24. Not fully in control of my emotions at that age. But enough to know I can't take off on these guys. Enough to know I would be under the jail if I take off on these guys. Enough to know that they didn't put any hands on me. So anything I do to them physically is not justified. So I looked at the manager and I said, I didn't, slave, I didn't say slave work, I said grunt work. And why would you use the word slave? And he tried to justify, HR gets involved and, and tries to smooth it out, whatever. So that meeting ends abruptly. I'm heated, man, I'm, I'm just steaming, right? I'm just like, man, I'm tired of this place. Uh, there's no one I could really relate to up front. You know what I'm saying? On top of that, I'm in the break room one day, and uh, these ladies, these black ladies are in the break room having lunch. And I'm having a discussion with one of them. And I guess one one of the other ones really ain't digging me. Older woman. All these people are older than me. And as she's getting up, as this other lady's getting up, she mumbles, house nigga. And I'm like, I ain't say nothing. I'm kind of staying. I'm confused. Like, me? I'm far from that. I'm like, man, you don't even know. I'm thinking, you don't even know what I'm undergoing. But that's the mentality. Because I'm in the front office. Uh, because I'm around, you know, the white folks. And I'm not in the plant. Then I'm a house nigga. That's the mentality. So you got these these white folks coming at me, and then you got the the black women coming at me. So you got the white men. I ain't gonna say white folks. It was white men, not white women. It was white men, and then you got the black this black woman. I ain't gonna say black women. It was a black woman, and uh, it's like damn man, can't can't win, right? So life is going on, life is going on, you're one pass. We get into a huge uh, argument, me and the guy share an office with, get into a huge argument, and uh, this thing blows up, right? The manager calls me to his office, and he's yelling. That's what happened. I, I, uh, I hit up corporate. I say, hey, man, this is what's happening down here. Uh, I'm doing most of the work. I'm doing most of the load. We need to carry this load. This is what's happening. And, and 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 it probably was insensitive because of what he was going through. But I, I don't care. You and your boys, man, y'all plotted on me. Man, I could have got I could have got fired. But that's not even the biggest thing. Getting fired, I could have got arrested. You know, um, man, that thing had went a different way. Man, y'all trying to really do me in. So I, I don't even care about your, your your illness. I don't care about your health. You know? And so it became a big thing. So I reached out to corporate. So it got back down to my manager. He called me to his office. He's steaming. He's hot. So he's yelling. 
about me going around him. And uh, I start yelling at him, my explanation. He tells me to shut up. Now, everybody hears this argument. He tells me to shut up. I say, no, you shut up. He says, shut up. I say, no, you shut up. Everybody hears this, man. And uh, he said, go home. So I'm like, am I fired? He said, just go home. I said, am I fired? And so he never answered me. So I just left. I went home. <laughs> About an hour later, Robert, HR calls me. Hey, uh, uh, let's do lunch. You know, let's do lunch. Because I also lived in that area too at the time. So, I, you know, so let's do lunch. So we, I meet him for lunch. And uh, he tries to smooth it over. He said, you know, this this happens. It wasn't a big deal. You know, because he's worried now. Because the guy told me to shut up. And everybody heard this. You know, he's yelling at me. Everybody heard this. So he, he doesn't know, you know, this guy going to play the race card. What he's going to do. But that, was, that wasn't even on my mind. You know, maybe it should have been. I don't know. But I'm new to the game. So that wasn't even on my mind. And I still don't think I would have done it. You know, uh, at 45, I've never done it. So, you know, I don't think I would have done it. But I've never experienced that either again. But, uh, you know, but that is not just something I run to. But he smooths it over, you know, because he's concerned. And so, you know, we move past it. So we move past it. And, uh I eventually, man, after that, about a few months later, man, I eventually take on another job somewhere else. Now, let me tell you, man, the flip side of all this. Because you may in your mind say they were the devil, right? And possibly so, but what is the devil? And is that all of them? Is that their entire being, the devil, if they are? You may say that. But let me tell you some positives. They sent me to a boot camp to get some training on the operating system, Novell. You probably don't remember Novell, but they sent me there. Man, spent seven grand on me to go do that. Uh, paid me a nice salary. I even got profit sharing, you know, every year. Even though I started working uh, there in September, they gave me a prorated portion of the profit sharing in December. And I wasn't even there, what, two months? So I got a prorated portion of the profit sharing. I, I had nothing to do with the profit of the company. Um, you know, um, they did some beautiful things, man. They did some beautiful things. I got to meet uh, Bill Gates. Uh, they paid for me to go to this uh, symposium where Bill Gates was. Met Bill Gates, shook his hand. Um, you know, so I got to witness some things at 24, you know, that many people don't get the opportunity to do. Uh, don't get to make that kind of money. Don't get to see the things I got to see. And so, you know, it was a beautiful time in spite of, you know, but, you know, the flip side to that is, again, I'm 24, making a lot of money. Bro, I'm coming in uh, hungover a lot of times. I'm partying. I'm partying hard. I'm partying hard, man. Um, now it's not apparent, right? But a lot of times, man, I come to work, man, I might, I might hide out in the bathroom for a good hour to take a nap because I just, I just left the club or I'd stop by the house, washed up, changed, and then headed to work. But I'm hungover. I'm sleepy. So I, I hide out for a good hour hour and a half knocked out on the toilet young dumb not only that I got a 
I got a little little bad, little bad Hispanic chick from the plant coming up to my office. When when my office mate is gone, when he's up in the plant, she's coming from the plant. She's watching all this. When she sees my office mate in the plant, she's leaving the plant and coming to the front office. And everybody sees her coming to the front office and going into my office with the lock on the door, right? The combination lock on the door. And we're going to the back room, which you can't see from the hall. And we're doing our thing damn it every day every day all right so who's the devil right who's the devil I'm my own devil I'm my own devil and those guys are their own devils in my highest point in my highest point in my best my best self uh, I'm a God. At my lowest point, the, the, the lowest vibrational point of me, I'm a devil. You know, at 24, I could point the finger, I was pointing the finger at those guys. Which, you know, it would have been accurate what I was telling you it would have been accurate but it's not the whole story I'm bringing my own mess into my life too All right I'm bringing my own I'm bringing my own amount of mess to my life too and that's why I asked in the beginning of this video who is the devil who was Denzel talking about who was he talking about Man, we got to be accountable. And we got to stop putting stuff, uh, blaming stuff on something that doesn't exist on the outside of us. Right? And so, you probably was feeling sorry for me before I told you my dark, my dirt. You probably was feeling sorry for me. Man, don't feel sorry for me. I pity no one. Uh, but also, no one is uh, below compassion, and no one is above reproach, because we all play the role of God. We all play the, the, the role of the devil, each one of us. Uh, I will show sympathy, but I will not show pity, you know, because there's a lot of stuff we see on the front end that we may not see on the back end. You know, people may know a whole different version of Will Smith than what we see. People may know know, know a whole different version of uh, of Chris Rock. Now, I know, you know, Jada has a bad name out there in these streets. And I'll be honest, I, I've been a part of that crew that doesn't look at her uh, so favorably. But people know a whole different version of Jada, where she's an angel to them. Yeah, nobody's below compassion, nobody's above reproach. Show sympathy, but not pity. Yeah. So, uh, who is the devil, man? Right? Let's be accountable. Let's be accountable for our own actions, uh, our own lives. And let's be slow to judge. Let's have discernment. But a lot of times, man, we don't know the whole story. People knew the, the chick I was messing with. Uh, she knew what I was going through. But we never took the chance. I took the time to say, man, we doing wrong. I never took the time to say, I'm doing man, You got no business back here. People knew she had no business back there. She would bring me lunch every day. And she would stay back there, man, for a good 30 minutes to an hour. And she was older. I was 24. 24 going into 25, 26. I stayed there. Then I stayed there three years, maybe. And um, she was like she was like 35, maybe 40, you know. Um, and that probably brought on some jealousy, too, because my, either through my ignorance or nativity, or, or just arrogance. It never dawned on me like, hey man, people know she ain't got no business back here. There's no reason 
no, there's no logical reason for her to be back here. And people talk, women talk. She told someone what we were doing. I know that person told someone. So maybe these guys are being angry too. Maybe they had something to do with it too. You know, uh, but I have to own that. I, I, I brought a lot of that energy onto myself because how I was behaving. You know what I'm saying? I was in a wonderful position. They didn't appreciate it. I'm making more than my mom is making at the age, at, at her retirement age, after 30 years on one job, and I'm unappreciative. 50 years prior was Jim Crow, and I'm unappreciative. You know, uh, when I would come around, my family they were like, "Man, every time you come around, you look like a million bucks." You know, I was doing pretty good unappreciative I was my own devil right some people thought I was an angel and they, they could be right in that aspect but I played the role of the devil too so yeah man that's something for y'all to marinate on let me know what you think as always love peace if you enjoyed this video and previous videos go to www dot angel to angel help dot org and donate that's www dot angel to angel help dot org and donate we provide services for the homeless the mentally ill the elderly and the youth